and welcome back to my channel. So in my last video I talked about some of my experiences in the hospital and the anxieties I now have when dealing with them. In this video I'm going to be talking about some of the slightly traumatic experiences that I went through and how I am dealing with them and like getting through them I guess. Again this video will be talking about hospital stuff and like medical stuff obviously. So if you find any of that triggering or upsetting, um, please feel free to click away now. So the first traumatic instance that I went through was actually waking up during my bronchoscopy. That was fun. Feeling like I was drowning in the middle of something that I shouldn't have been awake during. Totally not traumatizing at all, right? <laughs> For those that don't know, basically during a bronchoscopy, um, what they do is sedate you and then like flush your lungs out of stuff, I'm not exactly sure what, um, to see if there's anything they can take samples from. The doctor who did the bronchoscopy actually tried to tell me that I was asleep the entire time. And I was like, um, no, actually, I woke up, but you know, <laughs> okay buddy. Then he told us that he had to give me, I think it was double the amount of the drug that they would usually use to put you to sleep. So that was fun and I was pretty freaked out for a couple of days afterwards, understandably. Because of this, I heavily advocated to be put under anesthetic, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, um, for my lung biopsy because I didn't trust myself to stay still and like not panic if I was just sedated. Thankfully they agreed because I said that otherwise I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I advocated the same for my ear surgery and I still won't let them do procedures um, like that without putting me out. It's like my one thing that during in terms of cooperation I am stubborn on. <laughs> I just know that I feel safer if I'm out completely rather than trusting that I'll just stay still. The next thing is the night with the IV incident. I talked about this in my last video too actually, um, very briefly. This one is harder for me to recall 100% because it was late and I was- I had already been in the hospital for a long time and I was like actually sick. This is when I had pneumonia. So basically what happened is that likely my IV became clogged because that happens very often for some reason. The thing is that IV nurses only come around during the day so I guess the ward nurses decided to try to replace it themselves. The issue with that is that my veins are very difficult and tend to hide at times, uh, especially if I'm stressed out. So they attempt to put one in and immediately start stinging as they try to flush it. So they try again three more times and they even attempt to put one like here and using some like weird reverse method that I don't quite understand and that another nurse later told us that they weren't supposed to use. So basically all they did that night was hurt me a shit ton and make me almost have a panic attack. <laughs> they also weren't answering any of my questions during this. I was basically trying to ask like, is it supposed to be stinging? Is it supposed to hurt that much? Like, you know, things like that. Like, you're hurting me. Why? Um, and they, I was basically just getting like radio silence back from them. Ironically enough, I never saw them back in the ward after that and honestly, I don't think I would have let them near me again if I did. <laughs> According to my mom, they actually came back later and said they were going to try again but I had- I was already asleep by that point and my mom basically said absolutely not. <laughs> now if I'm going to be getting an IV, I have to take an Ativan either beforehand or immediately after or the arm that the IV is in starts shaking um, because of my anxiety. <laughs> um, if you don't know, Ativan is basically like, it's like a calming drug of some sort. So the third slash fourth event occurred when I had my pick line. The first thing that were, the first thing to happen was that one of the lines kept clogging so they would try to flush it and either nothing would happen or it would hurt and I was never able to tell which one it was going to be. So of course that made me paranoid of um, it hurting every single time they went to flush it. At one point during a home care visit it either wasn't flushing or it was being stubborn, I don't remember which, um, and I started having like a pain attack in the middle of it so they had to come back the next day and try again. Sorry nurses. It just be like that sometimes. <laughs> the second thing was when they had to take my pick line out because of the possibility of sepsis. Yeah, there's a lot that went on. Somewhere just beforehand, there was a like miscommunication of some sort and me, uh, 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 
Somewhere beforehand, there was a miscommunication of some sort, and me and my dad thought that we would be able to wait for my mom um, to show up before they took the pick line out. Um, and this was not the case. <laughs> and I was not prepared when a bunch of nurses started surrounding me and saying that, oh, we're taking the pick line out now. Um, I hadn't even been given Ativan beforehand like I requested. So I basically had four or five nurses holding me still and holding my arm out. Um, as I bawled my eyes out. Taking the pick line out actually didn't hurt at all. Like, you literally don't even feel it. But, like, why would I believe that <laughs> at this point? You've told me something won't hurt so many times and then it does. I'm not gonna believe you. <laughs> but I think all the nurses rushing me at once kind of freaked me out more than anything else. I did get out of it afterwards because I was shaking, of course. Um, but like, come on. <laughs> My mom arrived shortly afterwards. So those were some of the traumatic instances that occurred to me in the hospital. Yay! I really felt like some of the situations could have been handled more smoothly by the nurses and I'm sure my mom would agree with me. I understand that they're busy and all, but I believe communicating with patients effectively is really important and like, especially autistic patients, you know? And as for things that helped me cope with these instances, um, one of the main things that helped a lot was the Ativan. I don't know why I just clapped there, which I'm probably not pronouncing correctly at all. It really helped me steady my nerves and allow me to talk myself through panic and allow the nurses to do what they need to do, provided that I was given the time beforehand. The next thing is being put under anesthesia for procedures. You'd think after waking up during my bronchoscopy, the last thing that I would want to do would be put under again, but I find it easier to convince myself that I don't care what they're gonna do to me as long as I'm asleep. The next thing I did, though not quite as often, was journal. I would vent in my journal or I would make a page that made me feel good about what I could still do rather than what I wasn't able to do. Thankfully, I bring most of my journal supplies everywhere with me, so I was able to do that with relative ease. Sorry about the sudden angle change. My camera decided to die, like, almost as I was done recording. So now you get a giant wide angle view shot of my room. Yay! They they put an IV one time near my wrist, um, like right when I was in the middle of doing a journal entry, so that was kind of annoying. The last thing I do is talking myself through fear. Sometimes I have to um, slow down in the middle of what I'm doing, like cooking and step back because I'm focusing too much on how what I'm doing could hurt me rather than what I can do to prevent that and how I have control over that. I have to remind myself that if I'm careful there's a lot less chance of me getting hurt and that I have more control over the potentiality <laughs> of getting hurt in this situation than I did in other ones. So I think that's it for this video. I hope this was informative, question mark? I hate doing outros. So thank you for watching the video. <laughs> um, I have links to my social media in the description, of course. Um, if you want to follow me on like Instagram or Twitter. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.